In this video, we discuss the application of the harmonic oscillator to understand vibrations in molecules. In a prior video, we actually have set up and solved the Schrodinger equation for a system called the harmonic oscillator. And this is how a schematic of the harmonic oscillator looks like. It's simply a mass connected to a rigid walk through a spring, and the motion is just in one dimension, and this is just an oscillation. Now, um, the potential energy uh, of this system is Hooke's law where this is simply uh, the force constant of that spring, and this is the, uh, the distance between the position of the mass and the point of equilibrium, which is when the mass is at rest. Okay, so again, we have set up the Schrodinger equation for this system, we have solved it, and we have found out that uh, the energy of this particular system, uh, we can call it one half plus V, H nu V, where V is the quantum number and goes from zero uh, all the way to infinity and is an integer number. And then nu V is the vibrational frequency of uh, this oscillation and has an expression 1 over 2 pi a square root of K over the mass. K okay, where K again is a force constant. All right, so the question is, uh, why is it important? Where, why do we care about this? It turns out that this harmonic oscillator is a really good model to understand molecular vibrations. Okay, so for example, if you have now a molecule with two atoms, A and B, connected by a spring, okay, this molecule, so which will be a chemical bond in this case, okay, so you have an A, A, B diatomic molecule, this molecule vibrates, and the vibration of that molecule, that motion, can be fully captured, at least to a reasonable approximation, with a harmonic oscillator model. Now, you will notice how there seems to be a strong difference between uh, this uh, diatomic molecule and this harmonic oscillator in the fact that, well, here you have two masses connected by a spring, but here you only have one mass connected by a spring. Well, it turns out that both problems are mathematically equivalent, okay, if you make use of something that is called the reduced mass. Okay, so the reduced, reduced mass of this molecule is called mu, is simply the product of the masses of the atoms divided over the sum of those masses. Okay? So again, mathematically, it's equivalent to treat the vibration of this diatomic molecule AB identical to a harmonic oscillator, which will look, look like this, but then the mass here would be re the reduced mass that comes from this equation. Again, both of those motions will be exactly identical. All right, so then the question is, well, uh, can we actually apply this to one example? Yes, the example that we're going to be looking at is uh, called it's going to be uh, one of the uh, bonds in the peptide uh, link. Okay, so uh, this is the peptide link. Okay, and we're going to be looking at this particular uh, bond in this molecule, the NH. And we're going to try to ask questions about uh, the frequency of vibration of that NH uh, bond in this molecule. It will be a stretching uh, motion. Okay, so it turns out that we can uh, assume that the force constant for that particular bond is going to be equal to 700 newtons per meter. Okay? And we're going to ask two questions. First, uh, what is the vibrational frequency of this bond, which is the same thing as saying how many times per second does this bond undergo an oscillation? Okay? The second thing that we're going to uh, ask is uh, what is the difference in energy between the lowest uh, energy state in the harmonic oscillator for this bond and the first excited energy state? Okay, so uh, to calculate the vibrational frequency, we have actually the equation right here. In the case of an, uh, an atomic, uh, diatomic molecule or a molecule, we simply have to replace this by the reduced mass. Okay, and uh, so it looks like we actually have everything here that we need to calculate the vibrational frequency because we have the force constant that is 2 that is 5. We simply have to calculate what the uh, reduced mass is. And this reduced mass, again, is going to be uh, the product of the masses. In this case, we're assuming that this vibration only concerns the nitrogen and the hydrogen atom. So that would be uh, the mass of the nitrogen atom, which we're going to assume is 14 AMUs, multiplied by the mass of the hydrogen atom, which is going to be 1 AMU, divided uh, of the sum of the masses, 14 AMUs plus 1 AMU. Okay, we'll have uh, three significant figures here. Okay, where well, that is a mass. Okay, 
There's a problem with this calculation, and that, that is that these masses are uh, atomic mass units. That's not a unit in the SI. The unit of mass in the SI is kilogram. So we actually have to undergo a transformation of this reduced mass that we just calculated okay, to the SI system to kilograms. But that can be simply uh, accomplished by uh, the conversion factor between AMUs and kilograms, which happens to be 1.66 10 to the minus 27 kilograms per AMU. Of course, this number is very small because an AMU, which is approximately the mass of a hydrogen uh, atom, okay, uh, that has to be a very small mass in kilograms. And that is exactly what we see here. Okay, so in this case, now we have everything that we need in order to um, compute what the vibrational frequency is. And notice that we have the reduced mass of that. Um, of that uh, uh, diatomic molecule that is embedded in this uh, peptide link. We have here the force constant, and then we can cal cal calculate directly the vibrational frequency. And this vibrational, vibrational frequency happens to be 1.07, 10 to the 14, second to the minus 1, which is the same thing as Earth's. OK, so uh, this number is absurdly high. This is uh, 107 trillion times per second. Okay, so if you think about this uh, uh, this one stretching and compressing, okay, this motion uh, takes place 107 trillion times per second. Okay, so these uh, uh, atomic vibrations or molecular vibrations are actually extremely fast. That is simply a consequence of the fact that um, uh, these atoms weigh very level. Okay, and they're confined in a very small region of space. And again, that means that they, they can vibrate at absurdly high, uh, with absurdly high frequencies. Okay, the period of this uh, uh, vibration is actually very, very, very small. Okay, great. So that is the first question uh, that uh, allows us to use the harmonic oscillator to understand how molecules vibrate. And the second question that we're going to ask here is to, uh, has to do with probing uh, whether the harmonic oscillator actually is a faithful, mo faithful model of reality. All right, and the way that we're going to do that is by uh, uh, trying to probe the energy quantization of the vibrational states that you get from the harmonic oscillator. Okay, so again, uh, one of the things that we can do is uh, take this expression that we have right here and see how uh, those energy states would line up in a potential energy profile for the molecule. Okay, so that is the potential energy as a function of the uh, distance. And again, this is just um, Hooke's law. And what we know is that the energy states are equally spaced. Okay, this is equal to V0, V1, V2, V3, and so forth. Okay, again, the only thing that we do is simply plug in V uh, right here, and then calculate what the energy is, and then we put it into scale, which again is potential energy or energy. Okay, now, uh, the question that we're, we're asking is, what is the difference in energy between uh, that state and this state. This is the ground state, this is where the uh, oscillator uh, will be at low temperatures, and this is the first excited state, that is what happens, uh, what could happen if you add some energy to the harmonic oscillator when it's right here. Okay, so the system can be promoted from the ground vibrational state, which will have some uh, uh, amplitude, to the first excited state will have a larger amplitude. Okay, that will be the change to the vibration in this particular uh, bond. All right, so to calculate that, simply uh, we take the energy uh, of the harmonic oscillator and then we do the calculation of what is the change in energy between an uh, ingoing from 0 to 1, which is exactly the same thing as saying, well, uh, the, that's the energy of the first state, the, the state that you're going to, minus the energy of the state that you're departing from. That will give us, again, this difference in energy. All right, so uh, we can plug in the, the, uh, the numbers. So the, state, the energy of the state V1 will be 1 half plus 1 h nu v minus 1 half plus 0 h nu v. OK, and this is going to be equal to simply h nu v. OK, here you will have 3 halves h nu v minus 1 half h nu v. That would be h nu v. Okay, we have calculated what the uh, original frequency is before. That was that 107 trillion times per second. So we take that number, multiply it by Planck's constant, and then we get a number here of 7.09, 10 to the minus 20 joules. Okay. Of course, this difference in, uh, uh, in energy is uh, quite small. 
okay, but it's actually quite sizable. And here, I think that I want to draw your attention to this particular uh, power right here. When we're calculating uh, differences in energy between uh, the HOMO and the LUMO in polyenes, this will be electronic energy levels, we actually saw that those differences in energies were about 10 to the minus 19 joules. And then what we said is that uh, in those polyenes, you can shine a UV this photon, and the energy of that photon is able to promote the cyst-electron electron from the low energy state to the high energy state. Now we actually have here an energy, this, this is not, not like electronic motion anymore, this is just vibrations of the nuclei. Okay, and we actually have that uh, the difference in energy is about 10 times smaller than what we have for electronic transitions. Right, so what will happen is that the energy of a UV this photon will be too high uh, in order to be able to reach those two states. Instead, uh, this has to be done with photons that are of smaller energy. And actually, this energy, 10 times less, more or less, than um, uh, a given this photon would correspond to an infrared photon. Okay, so it turns out that this is the basis of infrared spectroscopy. What you do in infrared spectroscopy is you shine photons of infrared energy, and those photons are uh, adequate to be able to promote this transition. Okay, so whenever you see a peak in an infrared spectrum, there is a signature that you have been excited one of the uh, uh, bonds or, or vibrational modes of a molecule from the low energy state to the high energy state, and we'll examine uh, how that works a little bit uh, down the semester. Okay? So this has been a, a discussion of how we can apply the harmonic oscillator model to actual molecules, and we have learned that um, uh, the vibration of molecules can be well captured by the harmonic oscillator, and that vibration of molecules can be probed, can be interrogated with infrared spectroscopy.